Right, where were we? Well, we were at homework four. So what I have here is I'm going to push this loop of wire into this field. And I want to look at some things while the loop is going into the field. Um, at that point, it'll have a one meter per second speed. Um, the field is 25 millitesla. So we want to figure out eventually what the induced current is. I would do that first, we need the voltage because we're going to use Ohm's law. So we're going to get that potential um, difference. We're going to get that um, electromotive force and after we get that electromotive force, we'll figure out what the resistance is, and then we'll shove it all back in here. So the way we'll get the electromotive force is by the change in the magnetic flux over time. Okay. Um, remember the change in the mag... Well, first we have to remember it's the magnitude I'm asking for here. I don't really care which way the current is going. Um... I think it goes this way. Um, I could be wrong. And then we have delta phi. So delta phi is partially the area of the loop inside the coil, this area, times the change in the field, how much the field is changing at that time, plus the field at a particular time times how much the um, area is changing all over delta t, right? Okay, so b is going to stay constant, so this term is zero. Uh, delta a is going to be the height here times the change in the amount of area in the field. So a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. It's that sort of little bit more part. So that's the height times a little bit more. And the um, time, I'm going to use B is equal to delta X over delta T. So the change in time is going to be that little bit more over the speed at which we're getting a little bit more. So that's B, the field, times the height of the loop, times the speed it's going in there. So that is going to be, um, B is 0 0.25, or 0 0.025 Tesla. H, it's this height, that's 40 centimeters, 0 0.4 meters. The speed is one meter per second. And we have four times 25, so we have 0 0.1. So we'll pull that four into this part, so this is 0 0.1 and this is 0 0.1. So we actually have one over 100 um, Tesla meters squared per second squared, or per second, which is actually 10 millivolts. So that's the induced voltage. Now we're going to use this with that resistance that we have to calculate um, to figure out what that current is that we want, right? So now finding the resistance, we use our, the resistance is equal to the resistivity of the material, which is this number 20 microm centimeters times the length. Uh, the longer this is, the bigger that loop, the more the um, the more the resistance and the area there. Now that's the area, not uh, this area. Instead, it's the thickness of the wire. So. If we had a wire loop like that, it would be this 
circular thickness of the wire right there. We'll find that using this cross-sectional diameter, right? So the area is equal to pi r squared. The radius is equal to the diameter over 2. So that's um, pi times 1 half times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared, which is equal to pi over 4 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared, or meters squared, which is 1. So, let's see, I said the resistivity was 20 microm centimeters, so that's 20 times micro is minus 6, and centi is minus 2, so that's minus 8. 20 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters now, times the length, which is going to be this distance, which is 10 centimeters, plus this distance, which is 40 centimeters. So together, that's 50 centimeters. And there's another 10 centimeters and another 40 centimeters, so that's 100 centimeters, which is one meter. So one meter for that perimeter there. Then we have to divide by the area, which is pi over 4 times 10 to the minus 6. Have to double square that. So that's 80 over pi times 10 to the minus 2 ohms. All right, 80 over pi is uh, 25 point something. So 25 is 75, right? Is that right? Zero point two five four six ohms. All right, so that's going pretty good. Um, now we need to just put all this into Ohm's law. So I is equal to E over R, the electromotive force, which is 10 millivolts over the resistance, which is a little less than 4, it's, or 40, because it's times 10, um, so it's 3.9 or 39.3 milliamps, all right? So what we did there was to find that induced current, we needed to find first the um, electromotive force and then the resistance. The electromotive force, it's just BHV, right? It's how much um, voltage we get in here from pushing that uh, loop into the field. The resistance is a property of the wire from last time, and then put them all back together, and we end up with a small current running through that coil. And we have a similar, um, similar point here, only this time we have the loop going down. Now we can pretend they're like rails here, and it falls from a large distance, and there's no friction from the rails so that we get to what's basically the fastest it's going to go. Actually, it doesn't really matter because the fat, what we care about is the speed as it's entering the field, right? So when it goes from here to here, right? That's the time that we care about in this particular case. All right, so during that time, you'll remember that we have a force, which is going to be the width of this thing squared w squared times the field squared over the resistance of the wire right times the speed so 
that gives us a force proportional to the speed. And if you remember from physics one, that means that there's a terminal velocity. So for free fall, right, if we have a um, weight here and it's completely counteracted by a velocity dependent, dependent force, F, that happens at the terminal velocity, at the maximum speed for that object in the um, field. So that's what we're looking at, right? So we're going to set F equal to the weight, the weight is mg, and then solve for the V. After we do that, we'll be able to find both the force felt during that um, process, and we can't find that, actually we can find that right now if we want to, and we'll find the um, time it takes for the loop to enter from this point where it hits to the point where it's fully immersed. immersed excuse me. So, but first we want to do this. So, this is V equals mg r. Now that looks like something we saw in physics one, but it's not because that's the resistance v over w squared b squared, right? And we have all of this data. We have um, the weight, which is 400 milligrams. So that's three zeros to take care of the um, milli and another couple to take care of the kilo because kilogram is the SI unit, so we want to get in kilograms. A G, I'll cheat and use 10 meters per second squared. And then the resistance is 0 0.1 ohms. And we'll divide by W squared. W is the width of this thing, and that's 0 0.1 meters, or square that. And then we have B, which is the field, which is 200 millitesla, which is 0 0.2 tesla squared. First thing we notice is if we square the two, then um, we've got a four up here and a four down there. So this is actually a one and this is a one. So we just divide, th divide those out. Um, then we need to figure this out through the number of decimal places. So this is one, two, three, four. This is 10 to the minus four plus one for this 10 for gravity and plus and minus one for the resistance. And we have a plus two for the width because this is 10 to the minus two in the denominator, which ends up being 10 to the plus two and another plus two here. So actually all those cancel. So this is actually 10 to the zero um, kilograms, ohms, over tesla squared meters, uh, which is, it's going to turn out just a newton, so, or a meter per second, so that's one meters per second. So that's the terminal speed for my loop, all right, is one meters per second. All right, so then uh, we need to go on and find one of these other ones. I accidentally did them out of order. So we'll do C first. So that's just using our old V equals D over T, right? So T is equal to D over V, right? The distance here going down there is the height, which is 0 0.2 meters divided by the velocity, which is one meter, which is 0 0.2 well, one meter per second, so that's 0 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds. All right, and now for the force. Well, the force is equal to either this or this. And for some reason, I didn't think of this while I was putting this um, 
together uh, this morning. So that just means mass times gravity, which is 0 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3 um, kilograms times um, 10 meters per second squared, which ends up being 4 times 10 to the minus 3 times a newton, so that's 4 millinewtons. Okay, which I earlier did by a completely different method. I used this part instead of this part, but this one's easier, so you use that. Right? Just use um, Newton's first law to solve that. So first we had to find that um, speed, and then we were able to use that speed to solve these other two parts. Not so bad. I think you can handle that one. All right. And now the solenoid. We all love solenoids. So um, the solenoid is going to have both a resistance and an inductance. We want to look at both of those things. And then we'll find the magnetic field per unit current that's in here. That's basically saying that if I put a current into the solenoid, I'm going to get a straight line out. The more current I put in, the more field I get out. I want to figure out how much that is. So I can use that if I want to increase the um, field in that solenoid, which is something I might do. That might be the reason why I'm using the solenoid is to produce a particular magnetic field. That's a common use for that device, at least if they're large. And five centimeter radius is pretty large. So let's see. What is the first one? We want the resistance, so we're going to use the 22 gauge wire. And the resistance is just going to be the resistance per unit um, length, which we can look up for 22 gauge wire times the length of the guy here. We'll call that D because we're going to use L for inductance, right? Um, the reason why I use 22 gauge, it's about 50 milliohms per meter. It's actually a little lower, I think. Um, and you can get that number from Wikipedia. It'll, it'll tell you everything about that. On the second table, the first table gives you the 50 milliohm per meter, uh, which is actually why I chose this, and then I looked at the second table. And so I don't want to change it. The distance is the, the amount of wire that we the total amount of wire that we roll around this tube. So that is 200 meters, right, which is five times, that is 10, so we've got 10 times 1,000, which is 10,000 milliohm meters, which is 10 ohms. Okay, so we've got 10 ohms for the resistance here. And now we can go on and find the inductance. So it has both, this is an inductor, right? It's also a resistor, right? It has a resistance, it doesn't matter. It still has to have a resistance because it has a current flowing through it. So now I wanna figure out the number of windings here. So that's always fun. Um, also, we're gonna use it here. <laughs> All right, so it's not, and I guess here. It's not, you know, just for fun, but it's fun anyway. Uh, let's see, what are the number of windings? So we have the number of windings is the length of what I'm winding over the um, circumference of one of these circles, right? So just one of those circles is sufficient. Uh, circumference is, remember, 2 pi r. Um, let's see, 2 pi times the radius of this, the radius of that was 5 centimeters, right? So we have 0 0.5 centimeters. So that is 2 times 0 0.5 is pi, okay? Um, times t 10 divided by... 
um, 0, 0 0.05, so it's pi over 10, right? It's 5 centimeters. So pi over 10 um, meters, which is equal to 0 0.314 uh, meters. So our distance is 200 meters. We have 200 meters of wire divided by that circumference of 0 0.314 meters. That looks like it goes in, it's like two thirds times 100. So it's a little bit less than, a little bit more than, no, a little bit less than um, 667. And that number is actually 636 uh, turns. Okay, so that's a lot of turns around that tube. Next, what do we do? Well, we look at the inductance of the solenoid, right? Um, the inductance construction equation is mu naught times n squared, which is n over L, which is 636 over, I shouldn't say L, we'll call it little d. It's this distance here. Okay, so that's 100 centimeters or one meter. So that's 636 over one meter um, times the area. Now the area is uh, this area in this case, right? So uh, the area is the area of the winding. So that's going to, so we'll look at it in a second, times um, the distance d itself, which is the one meter. So the area is pi r squared, which is um, pi times 25 times um, one ten thousandths of a square meter, okay, which is 7.85 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Okay, so now we can shove all that in here. That's 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. In this case, we'll use Henry's per meter. Right? Henry's per meter is equal to Tesla per amps per meter. Um, N squared, we just said, is 636 over 1 meter squared. Um, the area is 7.85 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. And then we have the length of one meter. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we have, get rid of that meter and one of those and that meter and one of those. And actually there are two of those, so we can get rid of that one too. So we're out of meters. And then all we have to do is multiply 4 pi times 636 squared times 7.85, I think it is. You can do that in your head, obviously. Or maybe you can use a calculator. That helps. Um, that's going to end up being 6.277 times 10 to the minus 6 Henry's or 6.277 micro Henry's. Okay, so calculators come to our rescue when we have too many pies running around. Unfortunately, those um, transcendental numbers really aren't good for simple mathematics. All right, and then we need to find this B over I, all right? And when to use that equation, uh, let's see, 
can remember n phi is equal to i l. Right, so then phi is equal to b times a, so that's n b a time is equal to i l. We want b over i, right? So we have to have an l over here, have an n a down here. So that's the inductance over the number of turns times the area contained in one turn, that area or that area, because they're the same area. All right, so inductance, inductance, what are we going to do with inductance? Well, we'll just say 6.277 times 10 to the minus 6 Henry's should be enough for us. N is 636, and the area is 7.85 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, meters squared. Same area, right? It's this area. Unfortunately, this ends up being more um, more calculator stuff, and the calculator is uh, nice enough to tell us that this is 1.25 microtesla per ampere and some change. So that's the um, slope of the line, right? So again, in the end, what we want is this graph, this transfer curve, that tells us when we increase the current, we get a higher field, right? So that's all we really needed for this particular case. And finally, we're going to do a simple one. We just want the cell phone guy. So we have um, the current, actually. We're looking for the current, which is equal to 2 pi f times b a. So this is the maximum current, because it's going to be an AC current when we're driving this um, cell tower. Right, that's actually in this case it's picking up signals. So you're sending the signal over there. It's coming from your pocket because that's where you keep your phone. And um, let's see, F here is 1900 megahertz times 10 to the 6 hertz is 1 over seconds. Um, we've got 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 9 Tesla for the amplitude. And the area is, oh, the area is hard, so that's area is equal to 6 inches by 3 inches, which is 18 square inches. We have to multiply that by 2.54 centimeters per um, inch squared, which ends up being 116 square centimeters. It's 2.54, so that's um, let's say 5, 6-ish. Um, so then we have to um, take this and divide by in the fourth, so that should be 0 0.0116 meters squared. So that's our area. So that's times 11.6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Okay, so that is going to be uh, take one of those puts this up to a 9. It's a minus 9 and a 9, so we cancel those guys out. Um, so we have 2 times pi times 1.9 times 1 tenth times 11 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, so 2 pi 
times 1.9 times 1.16. That'll get rid of this guy. Moving that over there times 10 to the minus 3 amperes. So 2 pi is 6.28 times, times 1.9 and 1.16. Uh, that's over 12. It's 13.8 milliamps. Okay, so this is really just a direct application there to get that. So I don't know why I put all those numbers in. I think I copied and pasted from the calculator. So this, I just put this in. So, you know, the field is going to give a signal and the signal is going to have a maximum amplitude. This thing here, right, J over T. And in this case, this is our maximum amplitude, which is 13 milliamps. All right, so that is the homework. I'll talk to you next time. I know. Oops.